Hey guys, Steven here, and in this video, I am going to walk through the differences between controller tags and local tags, or sometimes they're called global tags, uh, especially in other PLC platforms, you might hear them called global tags and local tags or program tags. So the idea is you've got tags that can be used anywhere and you've got tags that can only be used in a small area. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's say we're adding an XIC here and we're going to create a tag. Call this input one. Looks like we already have something input one. Do input 12. So then you can right click and choose new input 12 and when you're creating this tag you know you've got your name here you've got the type uh, you can choose alias if it's an alias type tag but base is kind of the default you can choose the data type and then you have the scope okay so this is where you choose whether it's a controller tag or a local tag and they don't make this very obvious uh, that that's what it is but you can see the name of this uh, controller if we look over here there's always a couple different places you can see but controller trainer kit you can also see next to the controller part number you've got trainer kit and so that means that if you choose that then it's a controller scope tag okay so let's do that and then we're gonna go to our controller tags folder now and see that it created input 12 here okay so that's that now let's say we only wanted this tag to be available in this program and there's a couple different reasons you might want that we'll talk about that in a minute but first let's look at how that would be set up um, so after you've created a tag you cannot change the scope so that's kind of a pain. You definitely can't change the scope of a tag while you're online. And even offline, if you've already created it, you actually have to delete it before you can change the scope of the tag. So we'll just go back here. Now you can see this is an undefined tag again. So if we right click, choose new, and then this time we're gonna choose main program. Now if you had multiple programs over here, you could choose from the other programs as well to make it a local tag to any of those other programs so we only have one program so we're going to and and you need to make it local to the program that you're in there are some exceptions which is kind of more advanced with newer versions of studio 5000 but nine times out of ten maybe 99 times out of a hundred you want a local tag to only be um, available within the program that you're creating it so if we create that now we hover over this and we can see it says scope is main program if we go to controller tags now we won't find it okay there's no input 12 here so where is it well it's in here parameters and local tags of the main program so if we go in there we can see there it is so if we were to change and you you can change the scope of the tags that you're searching through from this drop down menu so you can go back to the controller if you choose the controller name you're basically in the controller tags folder here see and you can change back to the, the program that you're concerned about here so naturally you can also create a local or programmer scope tag within the local tags folder so we could call this input 13 make it a bool and then we go here and add input 13 and you can see it's it's a defined tag so that's good so let's see what happens if we add a new program, other program, and we create a new routine, 
we'll make it the main, we'll make it ladder diagram. And let's say we try to use one of those tags here. So input 12, for example. I'll we'll pull down this drop down menu. Input. Okay, so there's no input 12 available here. And that's because the tag we created is local only to this program. So again, if we go here, um, you can see it in there, but if we go into this local tags for the other program we created, it does not have any tags yet. Now, in any program, you can always reference a controller tag. So all these tags we're seeing here are all controller tags, or like I said, some people call them global tags. So we can reference those and use those as much as we want. And most of your tags should just be global tags, unless the way your company does things um, requires that you use program or local tags, I would recommend making all your tags controller because they're just easier to find, easier to reference, easier to connect to with the HMI, etc, etc. Um, so that's that. Now let's talk about why you would want to use program scope tags. Well, let's do an example here. Um, this is just one reason why you might want to do this. This is something we would do at the company I worked for. We would have multiple programs within a project that all did kind of the same thing for different machines. So for example, generators, you start and stop a generator, you would have a start generator program for generator one, then you'd have one for generator two and so on. So you might have start PB, um, Okay, so there's already something there, but let's say gen start one. And I'm going to create a new tag and I'm going to make it um, part of this program. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the name of this routine to prove my, to, to make my point more clear here. Um, gen one start stop. So then um, you would have your gen activated or something like that. So you would still probably have some controller scope tags in here, but there might be a, several lines of logic um, that use a bunch of tags that don't need to be controller scoped. They don't need to be accessible to all the other programs, right? Not all your bits need to be used in other routines. So why clutter up your controller tags? And also, why miss out on the perks of copying and pasting? So what do I mean by that? So let's say, um, well, let's, let's add one more thing here. Gen stop one. Now, it probably makes more sense to say gen one stop. Okay, we've got the scope selected as gen one start stop. And then we're going to change this to gen one start because that's going to bug me too. So now we've got three program scope tags here. Now, if we go here and we copy this routine and then we go up to the main task and click paste, right click and choose paste. Now it's made a copy of this gen one start stop program and it added a one to it. So let's change the name of that to gen two, get rid of that extra one. And then we're gonna go look in the program. Now it's it has those tags already. So if we go to the local tags, you can see we have gen one start stop activate it. Now what what would make even more sense is to just remove the one altogether since these tags are only accessible in this routine um, you don't need them to reference what generator it is. So now we have two 
routines that look identical, but they're actually referencing different tags. So if I toggle this bit on here and this bit off here, but then we go back to the Gen 1 start stop, you can see Gen start is still toggled off and Gen stop is toggled off. But it's the opposite here. Gen stop is toggled on, Gen start is toggled on as well. So then again, if we wanted to copy, paste yet another one, let's say we had three generators, change the name of the routine or the program, Move that extra one, click OK, and there we go. We've got the same rung. There's no errors. There's no new tags we need to create. There's no, um, there's no conflicts because these are not all using the same tags. They're all using different tags that just look the same. So that's an example of why you might want to use program scope, scope tags instead of controller tags or global tags. Hope that helps.